The doctrine of original sin purports that all human beings inherit sin and guilt from Adam. Many people cite Psalm 51 verse 5 to support the doctrine of original sin. Written as a psalm of penitence for committing adultery with Bathsheba, King David wrote in Psalm 51 verse 5, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. In other words, I was born in iniquity. And in sin, my mother conceived me. Many people look at this from a very shallow perspective. And they assume that this supports the doctrine of original sin. But a careful look into scriptures and historical documentation reveals something a whole lot different. In order to fully understand David, we must look at the entire context of David's life. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, we read of a mighty prophet of God by the name of Samuel. In verse 1, the Lord tells Samuel to go to Bethlehem to a man by the name of Jesse to schedule a meeting with his sons because one of his sons must be anointed king of Israel. Now, to anoint someone as king is a great ceremony. It's like an inauguration. And so they plan to do this along with a sacrifice. What you need to understand is a lot of sacrifices in the Bible was just basically more or less a barbecue. They would slaughter an animal and roast it on the fire and everybody would eat it. And so that was the plan. For Samuel to go to Bethlehem, to Jesse's house, and to have a great celebration. To anoint one of his sons as the king and to have a sacrifice. So Samuel went to Bethlehem and something amazing happened. You see, Samuel was a very powerful man. He was very well known and the people revered him. So much so, it says in verse 4, that the elders of the city trembled at his coming. It was like one of the most powerful men in the world coming to your town. It was a very, very special occasion. It was the buzz of the town. Everyone wanted to meet him. But something very strange happened. When Samuel got to Jesse's house, all of his sons were there in celebration. The sacrifice was was made. It was ready. Everything was in place. But somebody was missing. David was not there. Why would Jesse leave David out of such an important meeting? Why would Jesse leave David behind? Some people think it was because David was too young, but he wasn't that young. Jewish sources tell us that David was 28 years old at this time. Besides, Israel had a reputation for having young kings as young as eight years old. Many kings were younger than David. So that couldn't be the real reason. And the story gets even more mysterious because unlike his father or his brothers, David was a shepherd. Jewish sources tell us that his family drove him out to be a shepherd and put him in dangerous places full of lions and bears in hopes that they would kill him. They wanted him to die. But we know that the Lord used this failed attempt to kill him only to train him and to strengthen him. And there's another clue. There was something else that stuck out about David. Unlike his brothers, who had a darker complexion, David was red, reddish. It says in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 12, that he was ruddy. In the original Hebrew, it means reddish, of red hair or complexion. He looked different than them. We must look deeper into the early life of David. In doing so, we must look at the scriptures that dealt with his early life. Many scholars agree. David wrote Psalm 69 in his early life before he became king. Let's read it. Psalm 69 verse 4, David wrote, Those who hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. They are mighty who would destroy me. Being my enemies wrongfully, though I have stolen nothing, I still must restore it. Can you imagine being so hated that people make you repay things that you have not stolen? Verse 7, David said, Because for your sake I have borne reproach. Shame has covered my face. Verse 11, I also made sackcloth my garment. I became a byword to them. 
he made sackcloth his garment, and he became a byword. Sackcloth is burlap, very coarse material. Can you imagine wearing burlap clothes? That would be torture. Verse 12, David says, Those who sit in the gate speak against me, and I am the song of the drunkards. Back in those days, those who sit in the gate were the very important, prominent people. Today, you might kind of liken them to religious rulers or political rulers, perhaps even celebrities or wise men. These people, whom everybody respected, spoke against David. And to add insult to injury, David became a song of the drunkards. Verses 19 to 21, David said, You know my reproach, my shame, and my dishonor. My adversaries are all before you. Reproach has broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness. I looked for someone to take pity, but there was none. And as for comforters, I found none. They also gave me gall for my food, and for my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. And we know that the life of David parallels Jesus. Remember Jesus on the cross? They gave him vinegar to drink and gall. So David's life paralleled that of Jesus in many ways. If you want to know Jesus better, read the Psalms. He speaks in first person many times in the Psalms. In fact, if you want to know Jesus better, read the so-called Old Testament. But the question remains, why would David suffer so much hatred, rejection, and mocking. In verse 8, we have a great clue. Psalm 69, verse 8, David said, I have become a stranger to my brothers and an alien to my mother's children. David said, I have become a stranger to my brothers. The word stranger in the Hebrew, mutsar, is from the root mamzer, which means illegitimate child or bastard. But why would David say this? The scriptures contain some very mysterious things about David's family, and we went through a few of them. But there is more. Now we know that David is listed as the son of Jesse. Jesse is the son of Obed. Obed is the son of Ruth. But David's mother remains unnamed this whole time. His mother remains anonymous in the scriptures. The scriptures name and honor all the other matriarchs why not David's mother? Is she like Pharaoh in the days of Moses? You see, Pharaoh is a title and not a name. Even to this day, many scholars argue about exactly who that Pharaoh was. The scriptures don't tell us. Perhaps Pharaoh is not worthy to be named. Now, is David's mother like that? That she's not worthy to be named in the Bible? Another clue is the biblical account of David's siblings. 1 Chronicles chapter 2, verses 13 to 16, it says, Jesse begot Aliab, his firstborn, Abinadab the second, Shemiah the third, Nathaniel the fourth, Radai the fifth, Ozaim the sixth, David the seventh. Now their sisters were Zeruiah and Abigail. And the sons of Zeruiah were Abishai, Joab, and Asahel. Three. Pay close attention to that last verse. It says, Now their sisters, this is David's sisters, were Zeruiah and Abigail. And the sons of Zeruiah were Abishai, Joab. Notice Joab and Asahel. Three. All is fine and dandy, right? Until we read 2 Samuel chapter 17, verse 25. 2 Samuel 17, verse 25 says, And Absalom made Amasa captain of the host instead of Joab. But Shemasa was a man's son whose name was Ithra, an Israelite, that went into Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, sister to Zeruiah, Joab's mother. Wait a second. We got Abigail and Zeruiah here again. Obviously, it's the same one. Sister to Zeruiah, Joab's mother. It's the same sisters. But it says Abigail is the daughter of Nahash. We know these are David's sisters here because it identifies Abigail as the sister to Zeruiah, which was Joab's mother. But notice, it says that Nahash is Abigail's father. What? Jesse's girl, Abigail, was actually the biological daughter of Nahash. 
Yes, that's right. It says very explicitly that Abigail has a different father. But how can this be? There are a number of theories here. Some Jewish rabbis believe that Nahash is just another name for Jesse. But there's a few problems with that. One, there's an ongoing controversy among scholars whether Nahash is in fact Nahash, the king of the Ammonites, as identified in the surrounding scriptures, such as 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 12, and 1 Chronicles chapter 19, verse 1. Two, Nahash means serpent or snake. Why would Jesse have this name? Three, the scriptures do not confirm that Jesse is Nahash. And four, you've got to wonder, could it possibly be that the rabbi who came up with this theory might be a little bit biased? Could it be that he came up with this explanation to defend King David's family from any such scandal? Just honest questions. Another theory is that David's mother was married before. Now, there is no scripture that tells us this. There is no historical documents, historical evidence that tell us this. In fact, circumstantial evidence tells us otherwise. Jewish sources tell us that Jesse was a very powerful and influential man of his time. For him to marry a divorced woman or a woman who was a widow would be a big problem in the eyes of many people. And so that theory just lacks evidence, in my opinion. Another theory is that David's mother is an adulteress. And that would explain why the scriptures do not name her, why David's sisters had a different father, why he was so hated, rejected, and mocked, why he looked different than his brothers, why he was exempt from meeting Samuel, why he was the outcast of his family, and why he said in Psalm 51 verse 5 that he was born in iniquity and in sin his mother conceived him. But someone might say that he's supposed to be from the line of Jesse. Well, you see, we know that in God's sight, it's not the biological children that are the children. It's the children of the Spirit are the children. You know, in John chapter 8, when Jesus was talking to the Jews, people who he knew were biologically descendants of Abraham, he condemned them saying, if you were sons of Abraham, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing. And not only did he say that, but he said they were the children of the devil. We see the same kind of principle between Abraham, Isaac, and Ishmael. Ishmael is Abraham's biological firstborn, but Isaac got the blessings. He got the firstborn blessings. Same with Esau and Jacob. Same with Reuben, Jacob's sons. He lost the firstborn blessing because of his actions. So if that's the case... If David really wasn't biologically from Jesse, then we could say that God still saw him as Jesse's son by marriage, by law, and by the Spirit. And yet there is another theory, a theory that comes from our wonderful Jewish brothers and sisters. And this theory says that Jesse really is David's father, and his mother really isn't an adulteress, but his mother tricked his father into conceiving David without him knowing it. Let me explain. You will find this story in the Yokut Makari, Sefer HaTodah, and an article written by Hannah Weisberg by the name of Nitzavet, Mother of David. According to these sources, Jesse, David's father, was a great man of authority in Israel. He's well-respected and a very well-known man. And then David's mother, her name was Nitzavet. And the story goes like this. Jesse had several children with his wife, Nitzavet, including all of David's brothers. But there was a problem. Jesse was the grandson of Ruth, who was a Moabite. And according to the Torah, Israelites were not supposed to marry Moabites. And so there was a controversy in those days. And that was, how did that law apply? Most people understood that a Moabite male could not marry an Israelite female, because the male was considered to be the leader of the family, and that would overpower the Israelite female. But a lot of people said it was okay for an Israelite male to marry a Moabite female. If that's the case, then Jesse's fine. He's justified. But Jesse struggled with this. He struggled with his ancestry. And because of that, he decided to more or less put away Nitzavet, his wife. He remained married to her. He didn't divorce her. But he just did not 
have any marital relations with her. And everybody knew it. But there was another problem. Both of them still wanted another child. So Jesse decided to do what Abraham did and have a child through his handmaid. But the handmaid was friends with Nitzavet, and she liked Nitzavet. And so the handmaid made Nitzavet, Jesse's wife, aware of the plans. And they conspired together to perform almost like a Rachel-Leah swap. If you remember the story of Rachel and Leah, where Jacob slept with Leah, but he thought it was Rachel because it was in the middle of the night and perhaps he was drunk or something like that. Well, Nitzavet and the handmaid made the same kind of conspiracy. It's like, I want you, Nitzavet, to have a child through your husband. And Nitzavet agreed to it. So it happened that Nitzavet became pregnant with David and Jesse didn't know it. And nobody knew it except for Nitzavet. And Nitzavet suffered greatly because of this because she kept it a secret all her life. And so she bore the reproach and shame along with David. And everybody believed that she was unfaithful and that David was an illegitimate child. And apparently, even David himself believed it. That's why he wrote in Psalm 51 verse 5, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. 